Have you ever felt like you weren't intuitive at all? Or maybe you feel like there's a strong knowing that happens sometimes. Or maybe people tell you, oh my gosh, you gave me such amazing advice. And you're like, I did? Well, then stay tuned. I'm going to be talking about how to know the signs that your clear cognizance is opening up. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guides. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Spiritual and Ambitious Podcast. You know, I like to pull some cards. I pulled a card for this episode and oh my gosh, the card I pulled, you can't make this stuff up, is the channeler. Your body is intuitive. It Listen to it. Today is all about the channeler. So if you're brand new to me, I teach about the four different intuitive languages, the seer who sees spirit, the owl who hears spirit, the empath who feels spirit, and the channeler that uses their body and knowing. So that is literally our topic today. This is perfect. So what is claircognizance? Well, I talk about channelers having claircognizance and it's a clear knowing, but it comes a little different into people's bodies depending on their energy makeup. So sometimes we get a clear, clear knowing like I know, and it's, I'm not talking about gut feelings here, gut feeling that's more empath. I'm talking about, I know, and I don't know how I know, but I know that kind of stuff where there's no proof necessarily, but it feels like someone told you something as fact. So it's not necessarily experienced in the gut. It's more of a, this is a fact. I've learned it somewhere. (laughs) I don't know how I learned it, but I did. (laughs) And then you follow through with it and it's amazing. So that's one way it can be experienced. But also there's different ways your body can experience claircognizance depending on if it's opening up, if you become more comfortable with it and those things. So your body literally responds and reacts to things and you don't know why. So for an example, you could be driving down the road and all of a sudden you find yourself on a side road and you're like, how did I get here? But I know I can still get to my destination this way, but I don't really recall me moving to the right. Or maybe you do recall it and it's just, I'm watching my arms twist as it moves to the steering wheel to the right, that kind of thing. So your body responds and reacts without you really understanding why. And that is why so many channelers think that they're not intuitive and they second guess everything because literally being a channeler is like instincts. You're following your instincts. And a lot of people who are interested in intuitive development and sensitivity, they sometimes are disconnected from their body. And what I'll be telling channelers to do is to get more connected to their body. I find that one of the lessons of channelers is about loving their body, letting their body guide them and having their body be the tool that is intuitive. So whereas empaths tend to their life lesson being boundaries, I see channelers being more, I got to love my body. I got to learn to love my body and get in tune with it and in touch with it. And it's so interesting because I think so many times when people are interested in spirituality, they want to get caught up in the upper chakras and, you know, play with spirit and all those fun things. And they want to feel ungrounded, but eh, oh, we got to ground down, especially when we're talking about the claircognizant. So your body responds and reacts. So one time I was going down a trail here in Sedona and I was like, I'm so excited to go down this trail. And then my legs froze into place and wouldn't move. And to this day, I don't know why, like logically, but I just said to my husband, I just can't move my legs. I'm not supposed to go down this trail. So who knows why? Maybe I was going to run into somebody. Maybe there was a wildlife there. Maybe I would have slipped and turned my ankle. I don't know. But you got to listen to your body. 
and your instincts, which is really, really important. So what happens is your body will oftentimes get filled with inspiration or excitement and energy when you are getting a yes. And you might go, well, Whitney, I didn't even talk to my spirit guides to ask a question to even get a yes. That's how being a channeler works. So while I tell all my students to talk to your spirit guides and ask them questions and then get your answer through your intuitive language, whether it's seeing, hearing, feeling, or knowing, oftentimes with channelers, they are navigating their day. And if you listen to your body, they're navigating their day by their body and their energy. And that's a lot of what I do in my day. And it's a great thing for me to have my own business because I have more freedom in doing that. So I do see channelers being really great in like a schedule free kind of business or a flexible schedule, those kind of things. Because if you're following your inspiration and excitement and your energy, then that's really what a channeler does. So pay attention to how your body is experiencing it. So I will say sometimes feeling, but not in the empath way. I'm talking about, do you have more energy? And so with a channeler, oftentimes if they're doing a task that lights them up and they are really enjoying it and they have so much energy, that means they're on the right path. When I was first starting my business, they called me choo-choo, like a choo-choo train. They're like, woman never stops. She's just going and going and going because I was so lit up and loved what I was doing. And even creating my website at the time was just so exciting for me. But on the flip side, Chandler's feel very tired and drained and their body. So I'm not necessarily talking about feeling like energy as far as perceiving spirit energy. I'm talking about your body body energy. Is your body hard to walk? Is it hard to function? Does it need to lay down and take a nap? Is it feeling like you're walking through mud in your body? And that would be an example of a channeler that is giving you a clear sign and message right then. So some signs, do I notice that my body just reacts and responds to energy? And sometimes I find myself in places and situations where I didn't plan on it, but it worked out really well. And are you following your instincts? Do you all of a sudden you get this thought that pops in and you get inspired to research it or you get inspired to do your tasks? Do you get more energy physically when you're doing something that is lighting you up? And are you tired and no energy when you feel like it is just not something you want to do? And then another symptom of being a channeler is taking action before you know why you are taking the action. So I alluded to this with instinct, but some examples can be years ago, my parents applied for these two long-haired chihuahuas in a rescue. And so with rescue organizations, when rare breeds come in like that, it seems to be really hard to be the person to get that dog. And then you have to go through an application process. You have to meet the dogs. They have to do a home visit, all that stuff. Well, for me, I saw this and just had a knowing to apply for these dogs for them. So I had the knowing, which is a channeler response. And then we were asked to do a home visit. And I got to go with my parents, even though I wasn't living with them at the time. We actually visited the dogs. They didn't visit the home yet. My mom goes out to the pet store and starts buying all the toys for the dogs. And I'm like, mom, they have to actually call us back and let us know if they're going to come do a home visit. And we have all these other people that are visiting these dogs. She's like, they're my dogs. (laughs) And she was right. They got the dogs. So that's an example of you're taking action before you even know why you're taking action. You're just doing something. So a lot of times it's not on your calendar. It's not something that you've planned to do. You're all of a sudden doing an activity. And then usually you thank yourself for doing it later. Like, I'm glad I was doing this. 
I, it wasn't due till two months from now, but whew, I'm glad I did it because now some things moved up. So it's more of a knowing that happens. And so you've got that strong knowing, not the gut feeling, but a knowing. And another thing that is really common is that you have a thought that just pops into your mind. And we're going to talk about that when we come back after this quick break. This episode is sponsored by my free Spirit Guide Masterclass. Inside, you'll learn the five C's of Spirit Guide communication, your role with your Spirit Guides, two proven effective strategies to stop second guessing yourself and your intuition, and the single most important step to understand your intuitive guidance, along with four ways to perceive your spiritual intuitive messages. You'll also be getting a workbook to go through this class as well. You can join at messengerspirit.com forward slash free class. Welcome back. We are talking about claircognizance and the channeler, and we've talked about how your body responds and it is an intuitive tool, an intuitive vessel. And by the way, with your body being an intuitive vessel, you got to take care of it. So that means it's going to be important for you to maintain your energy, making sure that you are paying attention to what you are eating because your body is needing that. And because your body is needing certain ingredients, certain minerals, certain things. And also you will notice sometimes that it will be very hard to get an intuitive message if your body hasn't expended the energy it needs to expend. And that's what I talk about with my students. And today we're just talking about the signs to know your clear cognizance is opening up. So I'll stick to that. So a thought, a thought comes in to your mind and you're like, where'd that thought come from? Did I make that up? Is that mine? Or is that coming in from spirit? This happens a lot when all of a sudden you think about your friend And then you look down at your phone and your friend is calling or you thought about something and all of a sudden you see that an ad has popped up. What's really funny is I will see ads pop up and I've only thought about them to the point where I'm like, now they must be picking up on my my brain waves or something. I get that if you are talking about something and your phone is nearby, sometimes ads will pop up because you might have certain options enabled that they can pick up on those keywords. However, I'm talking about just thinking about something that is definitely intuition where you're like, okay, all right. That is what I'm talking about. It's a clear knowing your body responds or a thought pops into your head. And that's all under the channeler intuitive language. Literally your body is the vessel and that's how it is showing up. So it comes in almost like it's a thought you yourself created almost like, Oh, I have a knowing of this thought. That's what I mean. So sometimes it's a strong knowing and sometimes it's just a thought that comes into a knowing. So I just wanted to pay attention to those differences because I think people can get really confused on that aspect of it. So just know, Hey, you know what? I'm thinking about something and it happens. Sometimes we call it premonitions. I'm calling it your intuitive language and that's how you're getting the message. Now, because you've got these knowings, because you've got this ability to channel things straight from spirit into your body and it goes to your knowing center where it's now a fact, You are an amazing channel of information. So words are your power or can be your power. This is especially helpful if you're a teacher. This is especially helpful if you are someone who gives information to other people through like a counseling kind of way. You just channel information that comes through. So if you are just channeling information that comes through, you're not really thinking about it. You're giving information. And this means you will often find yourself in a position of being a wise advisor. And people might say, oh my gosh, you gave me amazing information. Thank you so much. And you're like, I did? What did I say? I don't even know what I said. I'm glad that that worked out, but I have no idea what in the world just happened there. You might find yourself doing this in the grocery store. You might find yourself doing this in your profession with your friends and family. It's like stuff just comes out of your mouth and you don't know where it came from, but it often lands with people. 
On the flip side, you might not have a filter and you feel like you have to say the things. And I'm not talking about in an argument. I'm not talking about when you are heated or when your throat chakra needs to be balanced because when our throat chakra is out of balance, we often say all the things. I'm talking about, oh, I don't know if I should say this because it's not part of what we're talking about, but I just kind of feel like I've got this message and blah, 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 blah. And then you say it and you don't have a filter. So channelers will oftentimes need to work on having a filter. And that's definitely something I work with students on. So just know, oh, you know what? Now that makes sense. I say some stuff that's true, but maybe sometimes it's not the appropriate time kind of things. Now, another sign that your clear cognizance is waking up is that people tell you you're intuitive and you're like, you're crazy. No, no, I'm not intuitive at all. I don't see things. I don't feel things. I don't hear things. I'm not sensitive. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, guess what? If people are telling you you're intuitive and you don't recognize that you are a channeler through and through because channelers have the hardest time embracing that they are intuitive at all. And one of the reasons is because they think that it needs to come in through a feeling in a hearing way or a seeing way. And so channelers don't trust themselves a lot of the times. And that's really the root of the issue. But channelers are the instinctual people that give the information. So if you are not experiencing things where you can go, oh, this is different. I'm I'm having a different sensation. Oh, this is different. I'm hearing a whisper or I'm seeing a light. Know that you most likely are a channeler and you can develop those other intuitive languages, but you are the most connected to spirit in the sense of your body is already reacting because it is so connected. It's like an instinct. So some of the things that you can do that's really wonderful, like I said, is give people advice, but also writing. So I'd love for you to grab a pen and paper and just write down everything that comes to mind. And this is what I'll tell my students to do that work with me. And I'll say, when you have your meetings with your spirit guides, get a pen and paper, ask your questions, and just start writing all the things down that come in as a channeler. Now, channelers can notice themselves feeling a little dizzy sometimes, feeling like their body is discombobulated a little bit when they are just opening up their clear cognizance. And so it's important to stay grounded and just know that your body might feel a little off kilter. It might feel like it's adjusting to something. And oftentimes we might feel like we're coming down with something. And honestly, we just needed to rest because our body is becoming a different version of itself on the energetic level. And so we need to just allow ourselves to rest, which means channelers oftentimes require more rest, especially if they're doing energetic draining tasks that their body is like, please don't make me do this anymore. You need to get out and get up and experience the energy that does lighten you up. So your body will tend to feel heavy or light or energized or no energy So I often tell my channelers, you need more spontaneity in your life if you're feeling stuck and you want your intuitive messages to flow and walking around, dancing, just pacing back and forth, anything to get your energy to flow because channelers oftentimes have a hard time clearing their minds. And that's for another day, another topic. But I just wanted to give you some signs and symptoms that your clear cognizance is waking up. And I'd love to see you inside of my free Spirit Guide Masterclass where I talk more about clear cognizance and I talk more about how to get your messages from your spirit guide. So I walk you through my five step process of how to do that. And then we will definitely be talking about the channeler and more of the intuitive languages as well. And you can go to messengerspirit.com forward slash free class for that. And so I will be back next week with a new episode. But until then, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at Messenger of Spirit. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to staying spiritual and ambitious.
This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM. Women's voices amplified.